Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena game video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, this one titled Perfect Storm, as we're playing a Storm Herald deck, a 3 mana 3 2 human shaman with haste, that when it enters the battlefield returns any number of aura cards from our graveyard to the battlefield attached to creatures we control, they don't even have to be the same creature, and then we have to exile those auras at the beginning of the next end step, and if those auras would leave the battlefield somehow, we have to exile them instead of putting them anywhere else. So we only get one attempt at bringing back a whole bunch of auras from the graveyard and getting one big attack in. But in Historic there's a lot of powerful auras that we can return, including Prodigious Growth, which for 6 mana gives the enchanted creature plus 7 plus 7 and Trample, as well as Ancestral Mask, which for 3 mana gives the enchanted creature plus 2 plus 2 for each author enchantment on the battlefield. So it doesn't count the Ancestral Mask itself, but it does also count all the opponent's enchantments and any non-aura enchantments that we might control. And the goal is usually to bring back at least 3 enchantments at the same time with Storm Herald, so we can count on Ancestral Mask at least giving plus 4 plus 4, if not more, so it can scale pretty widely. So these are probably the two most powerful enchantments that we can return with Storm Herald, but then there's a whole bunch of other auras that we might include, and I ended up settling on Warbriar Blessing as a 2 mana aura that enchants one of our creatures, and when the Blessing enters a battlefield, the enchanted creature fights up to one target creature we don't control, and it also gives 2 additional toughness. And the reason why I'm so interested in Warbriar Blessing in this deck is because we're also playing with Phyrexian Obliterator, and this is why the deck is called Perfect Storm, it's a reference to the Obliterator's flavor text. And for 4 mana we get a 5-5 Horror with Trample, and whenever a source deals damage to Obliterator, that source's controller sacrifices that many permanents. So Obliterator combines very nicely with fight effects, because it's the opponent's creature that's dealing damage to Obliterator, so that creature's controller will then have to sacrifice a permanent for each point of power on the creature that fought. So the bigger the creature, the more permanents they will have to sacrifice. So the Obliterator just makes for a nice addition in this deck, because it's just a well-positioned card facing all those Winota decks trying to cheat in and grass Marauders, which can deal a ton of damage, which translates in a ton of sacrifice permanents. And it also gives the deck an alternate angle of attack, where we don't simply rely on Storm Herald to win the game, as we get access to this 4 mana 5-5 five five essentially unblockable creature, that's also a nice target for various auras if they're stuck in our hand. And mana bases in Historic are pretty good, so it's not too much of a stretch to include it. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, of course we need ways of filling the graveyard with all those enchantments, and that's where Stitcher Supplier comes in handy as a 1 mana 1-1 one one zombie, that when it enters a battlefield or dies, mills the top 3 cards of our library into our graveyard, and also just makes for a nice cheap creature to return with our next card, Binding of the Titans, which is a 2 mana saga, on the first chapter each player puts the top 3 cards of their library into their graveyard, on the second chapter we can exile up to two target cards from graveyards, and for each creature card exile this way we also gain one life. And then on the final chapter we can return target creature or land card from our graveyard to our hand, so we can return a Storm Herald if we don't have one yet, so we can maybe find Obliterator, or if we just want to fill the graveyard even more we can maybe find a copy of Stitcher Supplier, which we can play for one mana, which also makes for a nice cheap spell to play alongside Storm Herald in the same turn. We don't have any sacrifice outlets to sacrifice a Stitcher Supplier, but it does make for a nice chum blocker so the opponent can't really attack us if they don't want us to put more stuff in the graveyard. And of course also makes for a nice target for Storm Herald in case we want to split up the auras so they don't all go on the same creature. And then we also have a lot of looting effects with four copies of Cathartic Reunion, which as an additional cost we have to discard two cards so we can put two enchantments in the graveyard potentially and then draw three. And then four copies of Thrill Possibility, which as an additional cost we have to discard one card to draw two cards at instant speed. And then we've covered every other card in the deck. And then a mana base, we do need every land to produce black mana to cast Obliterator. So we end up with two basic swamps, four blood crypts and four overgrown tombs, alongside the eight check lands with four Dragon Skull Summit and four Woodland Cemetery. And then we also included four Temple of Malice, which lets us cry one but enters the battlefield tapped, and two Temple of Malady. So we only have 10 green sources, but we don't actually need to cast most of our green spells. The only ones we're going to cast regularly are going to be Binding and Blessing. And then we've got 12 red sources for all the looting effects and for Storm Herald. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Don't love this hand. This is better. And then probably get rid of Binding, since we don't have the green mana to actually cast it yet. 
And then Thrill can get rid of Prodigious Growth to fill the graveyard for Storm Herald. Do I want another Thrill? Yeah, I guess so. I'm pretty likely to draw another enchantment with the first Thrill that I want to discard with the second one. Facing Wily Goblin. Alright, so maybe a Goblin Tribal deck. In which case, Obliterator should be pretty good. Blotson, alright. Shouldn't affect us too much. Cathartic Reunion. I guess I can discard Binding and Thrill and just keep the Obliterators and Storm Heralds. And then play Supplier for the turn. So only have the one enchantment to get back at the moment. But Obliterators should be pretty good. Ooh, I see Luca. What are we cheating into play? Ulamog, of course. Well, Frex and Obliterators, pretty useful against Ulamog. So they can't really attack us unless they would kill us. Otherwise they would have to sacrifice 10 permanents. A Lotus Field, pretty nice combo with Bloodsun. So maybe they can just hard cast their Ulamogs. Another Prodigious Growth. I could attack with the original Obliterator. Sure. Let's go after the Planeswalker here. Alright, not sure what that block accomplishes. So finding a Warbriar Blessing would be pretty nice here, since that would be essentially game over. Another Ancestral Mask instead. I'm just going to start attacking here. I have 40 cards in the library, so two Ulamog attacks would mill me. So we do have to be a little bit careful there. But I'll just send both of those. And then next turn Storm Herald can get back Prodigious Growth. Which might be enough for a lethal attack. Apex of power, nice. So they've got 10 mana, which is enough to hard cast an Ulamog here. Exile two Obliterators. Good thing we had a third. And our opponent attacks, but now they're just dead to Storm Heralds. Could even chump if I wanted to. Not that I have to. Alright, so pretty epic game. Seeing the power of Obliterator in the deck for sure. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Fine opening hands. Turn one supplier, turn two thrill. And then double obliterator to maybe combo with the Warbriar Blessing. Storm Herald in the graveyard can also be returned with binding later. Might actually play binding on two. Because we don't have anything we actively want to discard to the Thrill yet. Opponent on Jeskai. Another Storm held in hands. 
think I'm still down to cast binding. Can also help me hit my land drops in case I don't find one by turn four. And this is also going to inform us what type of deck our opponent's playing. Chemistry's Insights. Multiple colors, maybe a team of Reclamation deck of some variety, or four color Reclamation. We did mill Warbriar Blessing. So we can exile Chemistry's and Crater in case they're playing Zenith Flare. And then this is a good turn for Temple plus Thrill. Not sure what to discard yet, might be the other Thrill. Or I could discard Storm Herald since we're possibly getting one back from the graveyard, although I could also just get back a land. So I might discard Thrill to the Thrill. Opponents are looking at our graveyards, maybe they've got an answer for binding. Thran, Temporal Gateway, interesting. Alright, well, not sure what to expect here. So binding, I think still just gets back a land. And then we'll just go for Obliterator. I could try and higher roll with the Supplier. Technically with the perfect three cards mill deck could kill them with Storm Herald, but seems pretty unlikely. And then Obliterator I don't really mind attacking with even if they cheat some big creature into play. Because it will end up sacrificing a whole bunch of permanents. All right, Shatter the Sky. Let's see what we mill. Nothing useful. So just start with Supplier in case we mill some good enchantments. Otherwise probably play Obliterator. So I've got two Warbriar Blessings and that's it, so not the best. And there's a Reclamation. Alright, so pretty nice combo with the Temporal Gateway, I suppose. So do I start by just attacking and see what happens? Send an Obliterator. Sure. And then I'll probably end up playing another one. Opponent takes five. Growth. So I could keep growth on top and then cast binding to mill it. Maybe that's okay. Sure. Also plays around another Shatter the Sky a bit better. And we'll pass. Let's see what they put in play. Ilharg. Oh. This could be bad. Ilharg tramples, but we do have supplier, which can maybe chum block a non trampling creature. If they don't kill me, I do have Warbriar Blessing to combo with Obliterator, though, so. We'll see. Kiora.
Ooh, Dracoseth. At least they don't get the attack trigger from Dracoseth. So I'm taking 13 here. And then they can also untap and put Dracoseth in play on defense if they wanted to. I mean, I'm just trying to put more stuff in the graveyard, I guess. Ancestral Mask definitely helps. So I've got Ancestral Mask, Prodigious Growth, and two Warbriar Blessings that I can return. And also keep in mind there's two other enchantments in play for Ancestral Mask. Untaps Ilharg, Dracoseth back to hand. Alright, let's, I guess, exile some creatures for life gain here. And then I could Storm Herald and still cast a Blessing. I could start by casting Blessing on Obliterator, see what happens. And Obliterator would survive the fight. Opponent ends up sacking six permanents here. Which also limits what they can do to interact. Gateway response. Puts in Dracoseth, draws a card with Cura. Alright. Looks like it's go time. And then Storm Herald getting back more blessings means we can fight Dracoseth, so they have to sack even more permanents. So their opponent's not gonna have much left. And get these all back, and then we'll put Blessing on Obliterator. Probably just Growth and Ancestral Mask. Fights, sacrifice 7 permanents. And attack for 22. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Got an interesting hand, this would be amazing with Cathartic Reunion to discard both copies of Prodigious Growth. I think I keep between the four Thrills and four Reunions. We've got a, a lot of good draws here, and there's Thrill. Can cast it next turn. Facing a red-green Gruul deck with turn two Burning Tree. Let's see how many they have. Just the one. Well, Obliterator, pretty good against Gruul. Supplier could be a good chum blocker here. And then I'm hoping to draw another Cathartic Reunion. Not Azurta Goblin. I'll chump. So hopefully this stops their offense and then we can work towards setting up the Storm Heralds. Also close to just hard casting Prodigious Growth on Obliterator. But uh, gotta be careful that they don't go wide and just swarm me. They did take two, so maybe they're trying to set up an Amber Cleave here. Which could hit me for eight. So maybe they're waiting for next turn. No, opponent just goes for it. So we get to block Spellbreaker, take six. Opponent has to sacrifice three permanents. 
so not sure what they have in mind here. Sacks two lands and burning tree. So right now, Storm Heralds could get back Prodigious Growth, so that's 15, not quite enough to kill them. But I probably want the extra blocker here. And then I can just start hard casting Growths. Thrill's interesting. It's probably going to be too slow here. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what my opponent's trying to set up here. Maybe they have, like, land and two stomps in hand and they just want to burn me out. In which case I want to put the pedal to the metal. Alright, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. We're on the draw, we've got a reasonable-ish hand, would really benefit from Reunion or Thrill discarding masks, but I'll keep. Question is, do we cast Supplier turn 1, or do we Temple? Alright, now that we find Reunion, I guess I don't mind just casting Supplier on turn 1. Double Obliterator and Mask. Facing a Mire Triton. Sir Point also looking like a reanimator deck. Alright, that's a lot of Storm Heralds. So we still don't have any Trample enchantment here, which could be an issue. There's Ulamog, so looking like an Umburial Rides deck. So I could Blessing and fight the Mire Triton, I guess it's fine. Fill my graveyard some more, hope to hit a copy of Prodigious Growth. More Obliterators and Blessings instead. I mean, this uh, Storm Herald with all these Ancestral Masks is still looking pretty good. And then Blessing can clear any potential blocker. So hopefully no Death Touch. Supplier's fine. And another Vulture. I only have two Blessings, so I can kill two blockers. All right, opponent attacked. So is this a lethal Storm Herald? I get back five enchantments. Yeah, that should be lethal. Fight Supplier, fight Vulture, attack for 27. So had they kept back with the additional Vulture, they might have uh, survived here. And there we see the Burial Rites to get back Ulamog next turn. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Reasonable hand if it's a good matchup for Obliterator. If not, then it might not be great, but I'll try it. Alright, facing the Tempered Steel deck. Well, Ornithopter means that we might die to a flying threat here, even if we land Obliterator. Pretty happy with the Stitcher Supplier as a chum blocker, though. And we milled Prodigious Growth. Could have also been reasonable to just play a tap land this turn and then play Supplier next turn instead of shocking myself. All that glitters is kind of what I was afraid of here. Putting it on a flying creature. I'll play Summits and then we can Thrill discarding... Either Temple or Blood Crypts. Turn 4 Obliterator, turn 5 Fight might be too slow. So maybe the best hope is Storm Herald getting back 
blessing and growth, but don't have a blessing in the graveyard. Think I'll ditch temple. Alright, there's a blessing. So we'll just play this. Yeah, we might still die to this Ornithopter. Bowen's got two cards in hand. It's gonna be another Stone Coil. And they're debating whether they want to attack with the other Stone Coil. They are. So... I'm taking five in the air. Which means that I'm most likely dead next turn. Unless I can top deck Storm Herald and put enough stuff in the graveyard here. Currently only one growth, so I'm gonna need to get very lucky. But I think it's my best chance here. Just put six cards in the graveyard, top deck Storm Herald, and hope we milled enough enchantments. So far, no hits, just one Warbar Blessing. Alright, we are pretty dead. Can play Obliterator, but we just died to the Ornithopter. Alright, GG's. Flying creatures can definitely be a weakness of the strategy. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with... Uh, Reasonable hand, double binding to fill the graveyard. And if we find reunion or thrill, we've got some enchantments we don't mind discarding. Uh, do I take Obliterator? I think I do with two blessings, and then binding can help me hit my land drops to cast Obliterator. Alright, opponent's also trying to do something with Ulamog. Maybe this is an Umburial Rites deck, given that they're splashing whites. And yep, and there's the rights. So turn 4 my opponent can get back Ulamog, but Ulamog, as we've seen in the previous game, can be pretty awkward against uh, Obliterator, and I also get to exile two cards, so I could just exile Ulamogs or get rid of rights. Probably get rid of Ulamog. Although, it would be a nice mind game to leave them the Ulamog to reanimate and then get them with Obliterator. They've got their own Obliterator, alright. That's gonna be an interesting staring contest. Although, maybe I'll exile it next turn. Our opponent has basic forest in place, so they won't be hard casting Obliterator anytime soon. Titanothorex, okay. So I think we leave them the Rex and then just get rid of Obliterator and Rites. Or I could leave them the Rites and try and get them with uh, the Obliterator fight, which would be pretty funny. Alright, let's try it. And get back Cemetery. Let's see if they take the baits. Oh yes. Get back another one. And say goodbye to your board. And there we go. Opponent has to sacrifice 11 permanents. That's more than they have in play. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. We've got binding to enable storm heralds. Two storm heralds. Yeah, I guess I'll try it.
I'll keep Supplier as another way of filling the graveyard. Could also be good if we mill Phyrexian Obliterator and get it back with Binding. So I guess we'll do that now. Facing a Rakdos deck, not sure what kinds. Alright, it's the Mirror Match. Opponents not playing Obliterator since they have Basic Mountain, but they are playing Thuds. So they might be playing a version with Calcification and then Sacrifice effects like Fling and Thud. And uh, Call of the Death Dweller, another way of getting back a Storm Herald from the graveyard. So I guess we want to exile the enchantments and the Storm Heralds. And just play Supplier. Don't think we want to Warbriar Blessing the opponent's Supplier. Thrill discards Goblin Chain Whirler. Alright, so they've got the Chain Whirler, Call of the Death Dweller, Wombo Combo to destroy our entire board. So far nothing too exciting in the graveyard, also didn't mill Obliterator. So... We'll see. I think I'm happy to chump, because that way I could mill more enchantments or Obliterator. And there's more enchantments. And there we see the classification as we suspected. So if I get back Supplier, I can cast it before playing Storm Herald, hoping to mill more cards for Storm Herald. Alright, that might be enough for lethal here. We've got two Prodigious Growths. We had uh, Ancestral Mask, I guess even three Prodigious Growths. So yeah, more than enough for lethal. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand is missing a payoff card, no Storm Heralds, no Binding to get cards back from the graveyard, no Fraxion Obliterator. But I do have a couple temples to maybe find them. So I'll try. And then if we find one of the looting effects, I have a couple enchantments that we don't mind discarding. All right, I'll keep a binding. Gives us quite a bit of card selection with double stitcher supplier. And then we'll play this first and then I guess I could play Cemetery to play Binding next turn, because by the time the third chapter happens, we'll have played the other Supplier. Facing Mono Black, perhaps. Ooh, Remorse. Probably takes Binding. Yep. So that's unfortunate. Got us cry towards another payoff card here. I guess I should have played Supplier before Scrying there, although it worked out. Frax and Arena, so it's a more controlling mono black deck. Alright, there's Storm Heralds, currently don't have any enchantment to get back. So it's not very exciting. They just hard cast Ancestral Mask. I guess we'll take a look first. Thrill. Alright, I don't mind Thrill. I don't think I'll be casting the Blessing, but I might want to cast Mask. It does give plus two, plus two thanks to Arena. And then next turn I can Thrill discarding Blessing. Now if my opponent has their own Phyrexian Obliterator, that's going to be a pretty big roadblock. Although it doesn't look like it. So probably going to see a removal spell. I 
Also, that will help fuel my graveyard for Storm Herald. Alright, so Storm Herald could definitely be lethal here. I think I keep Blood Crypt in hand in case of Cathartic Reunion. Don't think I'll be hard casting Prodigious Growth anytime soon. Ayara, that's fine. And a Knights. Ooh, a Blood Raider's nice too, but let's see here. Yeah, going for Storm Herald has to be worth it. And then we'll put everything on the Storm Herald, I believe. Kill Ayara. And attack with everyone. And that's game over. Sweet. So yeah, the Phyrexian Arena contributing towards Ancestral Mask. Definitely gave us a few extra points of power, which ended up mattering. So overall, very happy with the deck's performance. I think adding Obliterator gives the deck a very important alternate angle of attack. And it's also just a well-positioned card with many people trying to cheat Ulamog in play, trying to wombo combo with the Angras Marauders out of the Winota decks. So a lot of matchups where Obliterator is a great blocker and attacker at the same time. And then, of course, a combo with Blessing leads to many free wins. So about half of our wins were with Phyrexian Obliterator and Warbarrow Blessing, and the other half with Storm Herald. And the fact that we have all those looting effects and ways of getting Phyrexian Obliterator back from the graveyard also means the deck is more consistent at enabling the Blessing plus Obliterator combo, unlike some versions that are straight black-green, hoping to draw both pieces at the same time. So if you're looking for just a Phyrexian Obliterator fight deck, this might actually be one of the better shells to do it in. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.